Hello, you little legends, and welcome to Runners Only with Dom Harvey. That's me. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for downloading it. Thanks for sending me your feedback and thoughts on the podcast. I will implement some changes. And thank you very much for all the guest suggestions that I've had as well. There's a lot of amazing people out there that have running as part of the fabric of their life. And uh, unless you bring them to my attention, there's no way that I can possibly know about them. So thank you very much. At the time of recording this, I've just been out for a 15k run, felt really good. I've noticed something happening though with my running the last, actually it's probably been creeping up since uh, the pandemic first started two years ago now. So I have a coach, I pay him $150 a month and he writes me up a program and it just goes to an app on my phone. And uh, I've been with Ian, my coach, for maybe five or six years now. And uh, with his help, he's got me running faster than what I've ever run before. And I managed to run the Tokyo Marathon four years ago in two hours 57, which was like a a goal that I didn't think was achievable for me. So we've had great success together. But one thing I've found with um, events being cancelled, I've just lost that spark when it comes to following the program and forcing myself to run fast. So I might open up the app. And it'll tell me, say, for example, today to run 5Ks at a certain pace and then 3Ks at a slightly faster pace, then 2Ks faster, and then a 1K sprint at the end. And I've just had days, and today was one of those days, where you look at it and go, you know what? I don't feel like doing that. I'm just going to run for fun. As a consequence of not following the program, um, my running has definitely got slower. And if there was an event, like a half marathon or a marathon, uh, it would definitely be like a pace that would disappoint me. Um, But it's reminded me the last couple of years... Uh, with um, cancellations and lockdowns and things, what running really means to me. And it is just the act of movement, and it's not necessarily about moving fast. So that's been a good realisation, and I'm trying not to beat myself up about it. I do feel like I'm letting him down. I'm wasting wasting my money by paying him, wasting his time, because he's giving me this advice and I'm not taking it. But that's where I'm at at the moment. Today's guest. Today's guest, Lexi Brown. Um, She was the Bachelorette on TVNZ2 last year. She's also a runner, and she's just a great human being. She's a really good friend of mine. I really hope you like this chat. But before we get into that, uh, some of the feedback I had. There was a lot of comments, people saying they thought the podcasts ended a bit abruptly. Like the conversation last week with Mitch James and the conversation with Matt Fenn, we just sort of signed off, and that was the end of it. Um, So I will take that advice on board, and there will be a more formal ending. It's probably a bit rude. It's like just leaving a room without saying goodbye or ghosting someone. So I appreciate that feedback. Some feedback I won't be taking is a text I got from a mate of mine, Craig, in Northland. Craig told me that he didn't like the theme music for Runners Only. I sent a text back to him saying, um, yeah, it's probably a little bit too hip-hop for him because he likes Cold Chisel, Jimmy Barnes, Foo Fighters, Pearl Jam, rock music like that. And he replied, oh, no, 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 no. He had no problem with the genre. The problem for him is that he felt like it went on forever. He said it felt like the theme music was as long as the podcast itself, which is um, not true. (laughs) It's a very big exaggeration. So we will be sticking with the theme song for a little while. I spent 80 bucks on that thing. Got to commit. Anyway, here we go with the extra long theme song for Runners Only. Then we're into it. Miss Lexi Brown. Oh! Hey, Runners Only. Yeah, yeah, let's get it started. Hey, hey, this is Runners Only with Dom Harley. Uh, fast paced, slow and steady. Anywhere you coming. Uh, just want to connect for everyone who loves running. This is Runners Only. Yeah, yeah let's get it started. Hey, hey, this is Runners Only with Dom Harley. Uh, Pace, slow and steady, any way you coming uh, Just want to connect for everyone who loves running Hey, Runners Only with Dime Harley Hello Lexi Brown Hello Dominic Harvey, how are you? I'm good, I'm good, I feel <laughs> I feel kind of selfish I'm wearing headphones so uh, I could hear my theme music You couldn't hear my theme music I know, it's pretty loud though, I can kind of hear it Right, kind of. right, I got it from, um, there's an app called Fiverr uh, where you can get things made and get yeah. things done. So um, some dude in America made it for like 80 bucks. No way. Yeah. Did you get to like give him feedback or did he just slap something together? He um he was actually really good. Like he asked me for instructions and what I wanted and what the vibe was and then he came up with it and uh, we went backwards and forwards for a couple of changes okay. but I was mostly happy with it. Oh my God, do you like it? I love it. Oh my God. I love it. That's amazing. Um, now, full disclosure here, I'm... I'm bloody nervous. I'm very nervous. <laughs> Dom, how could you be nervous? You've been on radio for 20 years. Well, yeah, yeah I, was, I was on the edge for 20 years and then um, at another radio station for like 10 years before that. And um, 
you know, The Edge has got like a, a massive, massive nationwide audience. Yeah. Um, this little podcast, I don't know how many people, maybe 50, maybe 100. I, like, I, I really don't know, but it's my, my own thing. Yeah. And it all falls on me. So I feel um, incredibly responsible. By the way, I'm starting to beat up on sweat. <laughs> I've sweating. got the AC on as long yeah. as it can go. <laughs> we, might, we might need a flannel at some point. Um, the, the reason I picked you, so the, um, the podcast is called Runners Only with Dom Harvey. Yeah. And I've, um, I've got a few radio friends and a few podcasting friends that I told them about it and they all sort of pulled a face like oh is it a bit niche like right. you know, is, is anyone going to listen that's not into running so I thought you were a fantastic guest because you sort of set the tone because um you you are a runner but you're so many other things as well like running's yeah. just a just a small a part bit. of your life yeah 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 I mean, how do you think running is for you, though? Is running a huge part of your life? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm like a, yeah, I'm like a running nerd. But I'm, I'm also, I feel like I'm a bit like you in a way. I'm, I'm, I'm still like a running anarchist. Like I, mm. I, I, um, you know, I'll, I'll get shit faced and then the next morning I'll be full of self loathing and I'll go for a run and sort of balance things out that way. Yeah, I like to think of it as balance, actually. Do yeah. all the things. Don't just. Throw yourself into just one, you know? Yeah. So how, how, where did it start for you? When did running sort of become a thing for you? Um, I guess I never really ran regularly in my life until I moved to London. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's nothing like a European summer to just motivate you to get fit. And so it was about fitness. And just, I guess, London life, there's so much going on. And I found, I wouldn't run far, but I would run three to four times a week. And I'd run five or six K. And it was like my little safety spot like I knew I could just get out and I had like half an hour to myself yeah. to, I don't know and, and that's the first time that I really started to appreciate um running because I think before that I was just like oh running and when you meet people who, <laughs> who like running you're like oh my god yeah. weirdos yeah. um but yeah so I kind of found my way with just regular running nothing crazy um really enjoyed it and obviously great for fitness and then last year um I decided I wanted to do a half marathon and I did it and so that was quite a journey as well because I was used to kind of running short lengths and then I started to push myself obviously with my training. And um, I think the biggest thing that I learned from running my first half marathon was it sounds so obvious and so simple. Um, and I feel like I already knew this, but I kind of was reproving it to myself, which was if you want to do something, set yourself a goal map out a little pathway. It doesn't even have to be super mapped out. I literally got a spreadsheet and just wrote three days a week, wrote down some kilometers and used that as a guide. Yeah, and then cool. off you go. So I started here. This was my goal. Mm. This was my time frame and my pathway. And I achieved it. And it was just like, <laughs> I know that's how life works. And most people are like, yes, Lexi, that's called goal setting. But I don't know. It was just like a nice reminder to me that like, if I want to do shit, I can do it. I yeah, just 100%. need to... Define my goal, set up my pathway, and off I go. Yeah, but I think that's how, because you reached out to me, uh, I think it was like August last year, you, yes. you, you were doing a thing for your birthday month, I was. and uh, we, we had a couple of DMs going backwards and forwards with yeah. some running related questions, and then uh, we were going to run together, but I, know. Uh, I couldn't leave Auckland. So no. you, you didn't end up doing um, an official like half marathon event, you just did well, 21Ks on your own, right? Because of COVID, yeah. so I was actually Which signed makes, up. Can I say that makes it way harder, like if it's in an event and <laughs> yeah. you're running with others. I know, I, I was very fortunate, um, so... <laughs> Sarah, um, decide, so my cousin Sarah decided to do a quarter and I was doing the half and we did sign up to an event. It was the Tauranga, um City to Surf and then COVID happened. So the event physically was cancelled, but they were still encouraging everybody that weekend to still do the half. Right. Um, but I was also very fortunate to have a friend called Cody who is kind of like you, like a running freak. He's been running a half marathon every weekend for like six months now and he refuses to give it up he's like I can't break the streak but (laughs) it means that I have a really close friend who was prepared to do distance with me so luckily um towards the end I had moved here and he did all my long runs with me and he just knows some stuff so he kind of was helping me figure out what I should eat um and how I just making me more conscious of how I felt as I ran I think I just used to blindly run and um, I've just learned a lot more about like listening to how I feel and how I can like better assist myself to be ready to run. Yeah, and you yeah. did you did really well. You um, is this a thing you do every year for your birthday? You do like a bunch of shit. Yes, I do. So I love birthdays, and I have a thing called birthday month. Um, and I think for By me, by the way, can I just say that those people are the worst. It's a birthday, 
<laughs> not a birth week, a birth month. But anyway. I will happily be that person in your life being like, it's my birthday this whole month. <laughs> it counts. Um, I think I, I'm a big believer in like enjoying every day in life, not just kind of like grinding and holding out for like two epic holidays a year or <clears throat> one cool month a year type of thing. So I like to – I think – I think my birthday is a chance for me to just have an excuse to really see everyone that I love and share a whole month with people and to go out and do things that maybe I wouldn't normally do. Uh, last year, I did a whole month of every day I had to do something I'd never done before. I, only, this, I saw something on your Instagram um, Instagram page, you um, snowboarding in a like, bikini. Yes, I did that. That right. was actually the year before for <laughs> okay. my birthday. So, you know, it's a trend. I like to do things for my birthday. And I like to um, kind of elongate my birthday as well. Um, but it's less about me and more about reminding myself to kind of enjoy life and to reach out and share it with mm. the people that I love. So what were some of the things uh, in this year just gone? The half marathon, obviously. What else? Um, I did a skydive over the Tauranga area. Cool. Um, I had a dance party on the beach with my grandparents, um, which is my most watched video. People just yeah. absolutely froth it because my grandparents are adorable. Um, oh, by, yeah, by the way, you share quite a bit of them on, um, if you follow you on Instagram. By the way, yeah. what's, your, what's your handle? What's your... At Miss Lexi Brown. Yeah, yeah. The relationship you have with your grandparents, it's just, it's wonderful, right? Yeah, it's yeah, wonderful. It's fantastic. Um, yeah, they're very, they're awesome. They're so, so cool. Um, we're very close with them. And um, yeah, I roped them into doing all sorts of things. <laughs> I got Papa to help me make a, um, a shot ski. Do you know what that is? It's like a ski. Oh, yeah, like a, like a, like a snow yes, ski with yes. um, some shot glasses. Exactly. Yeah. So um, Papa is really good at like whipping things up. Nana is too, but more like clothes and stuff. Um, but Pop, we went and found some old skis at a second hand store. He like helped me cut things and drill things and stick things. And then the three of us tested it, which not. Many people have done with their grandparents. <laughs> um, but yeah, but they're awesome, and we spend a lot of time with them. Um, yeah, I say we because I'm always talking about Sarah and I. <laughs> mm, yeah, <laughs> so this cousin. is um, Sarah, your your BFF, who we, uh, if you were watching The Bachelorette last year, you would have seen her yes. in that. Um, and I, I arrived to your house today to do the podcast, and she lives with you. Yes. <laughs> she's sitting here filming some of this podcast session. Yeah, yeah, we're always here. This, so, um, yeah, Sarah, it's sorry I didn't bring a third microphone for you. I'm sorry. It's like, Sarah's a silent friend, just there. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so your, your grandparents, um, when you, you told them the, you're going on The Bachelorette, I'm guessing they weren't surprised. Like, um, you, I'm guessing you don't sort of t- say no to much. No, yeah, I think um, when I told my family that I was doing it, I think there was definitely a sense of, oh, I'm not surprised, but not <laughs> because of it being romantically linked or dating, more because I just do lots of crazy shit. <laughs> and yeah. people are like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. At least he's off doing something again. Um, so, no, I don't think they were surprised. Um, and they absolutely loved it. It was such a cool experience overall. And I think um, a part of it... That is really cool is I did do most of it alone. It's a very alone experience. But um, when we had the home visits, I got to share some of it with everyone, which was so amazing. Mm. And it wasn't just, you know, mum, dad, brother, sister. It was like, because my family's not actually that classic. My family's very like wide yeah. and varied and we're all very like open and together and stuff. So I had like so many people at my home visits. Um and it was cool because everyone got to see it and everyone got to experience like the cameras, the people, the people trying to tell you what to do and like, you know, I had to give everyone I had to get like protect my family a little bit and they're like, <laughs> they're gonna do this, they're gonna do that, just say no, come get me. Like, you know, it was like that. But I was so pleased that I could share some of the process with them so that they could kind of understand it a little bit more so when I talked about stuff they had a bit of a clue because they did get to do it for a couple of days yeah, well I think that's exciting for most people right like to yeah. to see the yeah d- yeah the directors and the cameras and just yeah. that sort of slither of like showbiz I guess in a way yeah I think so I think for me it was so intensive and you're in it so deep and so quick that it does normalize kind of in a way kind of quickly um but for lots of people who've never done something like that it is it's quite novel mm. and it's very interesting um I think I think there's a lot – these days a lot more people understand reality TV is a certain way and there's producers and there's storylines, even though it's reality. Mm. Um, but I still think people are still surprised by how many people are behind, like, um, what the camera can see yeah. and how much effort goes into it. And, yeah, it was pretty outrageous, pretty unreal experience for me as well because it, it – I, I don't know, it was just so interesting being, like, the center 
Like it's not yeah, like yes, I was. You, you I was like the one, the star of the yeah, show. yeah, as opposed to one of twenty or in another format like the block. You know, you've got how many sets of two, yeah, and it's about yeah. everyone. So yeah, it was really unique and really for me and really um, interesting um, to be that one. And it's kind of like everyone wants something from you and everyone needs something from you. And you know, without you, they don't have the show. Like it mm. all kind of <laughs> rides on you. So yeah, it was, um, it was a lot. Of pressure. So, yeah. so how, how did that come about? Where, where were you? You were, you were living in Canada? <laughs> yes. Yeah, so yeah. I was living in Canada. Um, I'd moved to Canada from London and then I got home from overseas, um, because of COVID. So we'd all come home, I think in March and I was in a relationship at the time. We got home, broke up, um, How long was that one? Was it a long one? Yeah, that was probably my longest. Um, that one was about three years. Oh, sorry to hear what happened there. Did yeah. it just run its course? or Yeah, we just went yeah. right for each other um, and we'd kind of figured that out. And I think coming home, we were like, okay, well, we don't need to do this anymore. Um, but, you know, it's still a lot to process. Yeah. Um, how, old, how old were we then? Like 20, 28, 29? Uh, yeah, I think I was... I think I was no, I had my 30th in Canada. Right. Okay. So I must have been 30. Yeah. Um, got home and... Yeah, I was just kind of like footloose and fancy free, to be honest. Mm. <laughs> and I didn't even have like a job because I just got home from overseas. So I was mooching around trying to, I don't know, figure life out day by day. And then, um, you know what they do? They like target you. They target my demographic on social media. So, I so, s- so what, did you start getting ads or yes, did someone? I started getting ads. Yeah, right, right. I started getting ads. Huh. And funnily enough, before I even got ads, my little brother in in a message chat was like um, asking me what I was up to, and he said something, and I put this in my application video. He wrote in a message, "You should do the Bachelorette. That'd be hilarious TV." Ha ha. And that's before <laughs> it was even on my radar. Yeah. How's that for foreshadowing? Um, anyway, saw the ad, clicked into it, and thought, "Oh," and um, read through what you had to do. And then I just exited it and didn't think about Which it much. What, what, like paperwork and stuff? Yeah. I okay. just wanted to look at like what okay. it took. Like, And it was basically, I think it was like 10 questions and um, a one-minute video application. Right. And I looked at it, exited it, didn't think about it. And then I saw another ad and I thought, oh, well. Could be a I'm sign. I'm going to do this. This yeah. is hilarious. And so um, I applied and I just took the piss. I was not serious about it at all. <laughs> I mean, like, I seriously would love to find someone to sh- share my life with, but um, I'm sure many applications kind of gushed about maybe love and men, um, and mine wasn't quite of that nature. But maybe that's why um, it caught their eye, I'm not sure. Mm. But, yeah, and then it was just started the slow process. I just got an email first and then had to do a video call, um, and they just asked me, like, quick fire questions. It just did not stop. It was 30 minutes of just, like, boom, boom, boom. And they record that. And then they mash that up with my application video and all the finalists go to like a set of people. Um, and then, yeah, I got a call and I was shortlisted. And then I got an email to say I was still shortlisted and a favourite. And then I got the call and I f- um, they flew me up for interviews. And it was three finalists. And then, yeah, they called me the next day. And is it psych testing or anything like that? Yes. Yeah. Um, Yes, we did have to get psych tested. I actually think I had to get psych tested before I had the contract, as in um, I think the top final girls had to get psych tested. And all the boys um, have to get psych tested. Basically everyone who goes on the show, so I believe, has to get psych tested. Mm. Um, Not that that stops necessarily. (laughs) Some crazy people getting through. (laughs) Um, Wow. So so when you applied for it, like how much of you was like, okay, I could find, I could find Mr. Wright here. And how much was like, oh, well, whatever happens, it's a good experience. Get a bit of exposure, get on TV. I think for me, uh, it was just kind of like a mash of both. I think um, a huge draw card was like, this would be so fun. And mm, just like another mm. hilarious story for my book of life. Um, and the other side was like, it's very unlikely. It's so unlikely. Like, what are the chances oh. that a casting crew who have never met you or gotten to know you can cast the man of your dreams? Yeah. Like, chances are through the floor, like no chance. But and I, I couldn't let go of this like, but what if? Mm. Like, genuinely, what if someone walked down that red carpet and I was just like, 
Holy shit! <laughs> mm. And uh, so, how many? How many guys? But there was a lot of guys, eh? Yeah, a ton think, of guys. I think there was like twenty or something. Yeah, yeah. I think there might have been nineteen, and then there was the intruder. Right. Oh, um, Jesse. Jesse. Yeah, who I've become you, quite good friends with. Jesse? He's yeah. he's a great dude. Yeah, he's hilarious. Um, but straight away, like as soon as Jesse turned up as the intruder, I was like, oh, and same with him. Both of us were just like mate vibes straight away. Um, but yeah, I feel a little ripped off. Mm. They didn't give me any like realistic intruders, and they only gave me one. Um, but still, Jesse's hilarious, so I'm glad I met him. Yeah. Do you um yeah what what do you look for like do you, do you have like a um like a che- like a male checklist or a partner checklist? <laughs> no, I don't operate that succinctly <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to love. Um, I think for me, I'm massive on um like feeling it. Yeah, I love it when you meet someone and straight away you're like, oh my. Who is that? You mm. know, and it'll be a mix of all sorts of things like, yes, what they look like, but also it's just like that thing you can't describe because I've been having this thing. Yeah, happen. That expect that. Yes, sure. and like, I don't know what it is, but lately, like, I've met a few nice people um, and like they're good looking, they're cool, nice to me, into me. And I just have to be honest with myself and just, it's so weird when they can like be great on paper. But it's, we're just missing the chemistry. Yeah. Like there's just no chemistry. And so I think I've really identified that that does matter to me because you just – I just That's everything. Oh, you, it, it, yeah. Isn't it? Because yeah. I don't think I could spend my whole life with someone who's – Just nice. Just He's like, nice. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not really vibing and it. And people but. sometimes <laughs> try to like push back on that. They're like, oh, what's wrong with nice guys? I'm like, no, no, no nice no, guys no. are great. It's yeah. not about – that. it's about chemistry. Yeah. Because ultimately whoever I do end up with, I, um, I, they better be nice. They will be nice. I won't accept anything less. But um, it's the chemistry that's key for me, I think. Yeah, as they say in Love Island, you need the fanny flutters, right? Yeah, there you we the, go. You, you need, need the, those. Yeah, you need you, to feel you, it yeah. where it matters. Mm. So um, um, there, there, there was a great bunch of guys, though. So no, yes. there was no one there that you, you were like, oh, straight away. Like, oh, shit. N- no, there no. was no one straight away that I was like, whoa, um. Obviously, I thought a few of them were cute and mm. stuff, um, but I actually kind of enjoyed that there was no one that just blew me away because it allowed me to continue to relax. Yeah. I think if anyone had been there that I'd so seriously been like, oh my God, that guy, I would have found it hard to keep my shit together. You know. Yeah. And so on national TV, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. on national TV, it's a little easier when, yeah, when you're just kind of... Um, f- I don't know. It's a little bit more relaxed because you don't immediately feel like holy shit. Yeah, there's there's one guy Paul who ended up finishing third. Yes. He's um he's a chef in Auckland. I've I've never met him in real life yet, but we've um become like Instagram mates. Yeah. Um, and he's he's a great human. Um, I remember he stands out because I remember him turning up on the Bachelorette, and um he like pulled out a key and he goes, "Oh, this is a key to my apartment in Paris or mm-hmm. something." Yeah. Um, he he is like a super super cool guy, but yeah. I don't know, was that kind of douchey? <laughs> was what, oh, the, the key the thing? Key, yeah. Do you know what is so funny about this whole thing is like everyone <laughs> tells me different opinions about different things. So some people say to me, oh, my God, that guy pulled out those keys and we were all like, whoa, nailed it. And then other people like you were like, never do that again. That was embarrassing. <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I just tried to take everything kind of like um, – just as it came. Yeah. And, like, I, I don't think I'm particularly judgy on anything, to be honest, because, fuck, be who you want. Like, do what sure, you want. Yeah. Like, people can do what they like. And just, I try to enjoy everyone for, like, the value that they do bring and not worry about whether they're this or whether they're that. Um, yeah, that was pretty funny. He's hilarious. We, we really got on, uh, I think, because of just living overseas. And we get on anyway. We're still really good friends. Yeah. Um, yeah how, many, how many of the guys are you still friends with? So many of them. Yeah, really? Um, I think time has something to do with it. Like, the longer people were on the show, I'm usually better friends with the ones that were there the longest. But, um, yeah, I'm really good friends with almost all of them. Um, not the guys at the start that I kind of only met for one day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, like, I think I literally saw one of them for, like, 10 minutes, and then they're gone. Because you send quite a few home on the first night. Um, but, yeah, I, I'm so, so, so stoked because I'm a very people person, and I – I definitely, like, gain energy from being around others. Um, And so I really loved the people aspect of it. Although we didn't actually – TV is very misleading. I didn't get to spend a lot of time with any of them. Actually, yeah, I wanted to to ask you about that because I'm guessing – so the guys have got each other. Yes. Um, so, so what do you got? Where are you staying? Yeah. Have you got any access to the internet or outside world? Yeah, so um, 
being like the one, as in I was the bachelorette, I had kind of full autonomy over my usual life, except that I had this filming schedule, which was super intense. Um, none of the boys had their phones. Um, so I was saying when we were in Auckland, I was at the Novotel, and for the first week I had Sarah with me, which was amazing. So she was in the room oh, next nice. to me. Yeah, so that was a great support. Um, and then once we left Auckland, we went to Queenstown um, and – no, was it the Nova? No, I was in the Sofitel in Auckland and the Novotel in Queenstown. Um, but very lonely. So the people I'm closest to or with often is I had a story producer. So for people who don't know, the story producer kind of monitors, looks after, builds, grows my story. So like my narrative. Um, and it's, it's quite a working relationship because... <clears throat> yes, what happens in front of the camera is kind of what's happening and that's like the bulk of it, but there's all the shots where you talk to camera, right? And that's where you can comment on things and get your side across or, um, I don't know, she, My I worked really well with my story producer. She was great. I so appreciate her. Love her. Shout out, Hatfield. Um, and so I felt really fortunate to have her. We worked really well together. And, and I would push back as well. She'd sometimes ask me like the dumbest questions and I'd be like, I'm not answering that. And well, what line? What's an example of the dumbest question? <clears throat> oh, something like that's too, che- too personal che- or nah, cheesy? Che- real yeah. cheesy stuff. So then you end up answering it and saying something that you would never normally say, yeah. and they'll use that as a cut. You know, like oh, what's an example? Something just so dumb. Like um, oh, see, I can't even think of it off the top of my head. And I was just like, I'm not going to say any words surrounding what you've just said because that's weird and that's not me or how I think. Yeah. So sometimes she would ask me things and I'd be like, no. And then I'd say, what are you trying to get at? And she was so good. She'd be like, look, this has happened for you, but the audience haven't seen this or that yet. So you need to take them on that journey and explain. Or like, it would be weird if just blah, blah goes home tomorrow and you haven't even spoken about him. Mm. Like, you know how you're feeling, but you haven't talked about it yet. So I'd be like, hmm, this is a good point. So then I'd be like, look, I'm happy to say this. What do you think? And she'd be like, yep, we'll go with that. And so it was just... Like a compromise. Yes, yeah. compromise. Um, I suppose it's lucky that you've got that strength of character, though, because a lot yes. of a lot of people would be potentially more moldable or more go with the flow. And 100%. Then, yeah. And I think um, even, even I look back on the experience and think, oh, they got me there, or like, oh, I should have pushed back there. But you don't know what you don't know. So I'm pleased that I did have like a certain level of that in me when I started. Um, so yeah, very, spent a lot of time with my story producer, you know, we'd do a whole day shoot, finish a row of ceremony at like midnight and still have to go into like a two hour Fuck, really? director camera. So I'm getting to bed like middle of the night. Yeah. So, um, really intense. Wow. Um, but that's okay. It was epic experience. Um, I also, <laughs> oh God, I'd be so <laughs> ready. I'd be, uh, as, I'd be furious. It was five weeks filming and I oh. had one day off. And which was between Auckland and Queenstown. Um, uh, well, I'm sorry for so many questions about this, but I'm, um, no. I love shitty reality TV. <laughs> I'm, it's a guilty pleasure for all of us, don't you worry. I'm mad about that stuff. So um, the, the guy that finished second, what was it? Is it Todd. Todd. Todd, yeah. So when you let him down right at the end, yeah. like he, he was very, very emotional, like yeah. burst into tears. It was a really sad moment. How, like, how many hours do you think you'd spent with him all up in the previous <sighs> X amount of weeks? Yeah, not a lot with anyone. Like, you really don't know these people. I mean, sorry. With with some of them, I, I do think that how I feel about them now is because of what I learned about them on the show. And then with yeah. others outside of the show, uh, over time, you're like, whoa, that was really, like, just put on. So um, time spent alone. Oh, well, you're never alone because you're always with the camera crew. But maybe on, a, like, I think, I think I only had it one single date with Todd and maybe one – Chat or one like half date. There's like full dates and half dates. Um, so you don't even know someone after that. No, you do not know people. And mm. I think this is what maybe people watching don't realize is a you do not spend time with these people. They all spend time with each other, like you said, in the mm. house. Like mm. they've got nothing to do. They get to know each other, bond, whatever. The camera crew does leave, and they can all tell bedtime stories. Which apparently there are some stories from that. <laughs> um, but I didn't have that kind of opportunity, so. Uh, yeah, A, everything is kind of like on screen and you get no off screen time. Literally, if you try to talk when they're not filming, they like separate you <laughs> or they'll stand between you or they'll just be like, stop talking. Like, so, oh. literally, every conversation you have with each of the guys is, is done on, on, like, on film. <clears throat> yeah, wow. so it's, it's not natural. And some people, uh, I think I managed okay with it to still kind of 
really be myself, but I think for some of the guys it was re- like really unnatural and a real struggle. So it makes it hard to keep. Oh, the, with the, the whole thing anyway. is compl- you, you think it's it's so unnatural. You, say you say you meet someone and you go out on a first <laughs> date. You, like, you probably talk about what music you're into. You're not going to yeah. be talking about your feelings. Yeah, and also um, another thing that happened was. We would get, you know, sometimes with the guys, we'd get into really nice, normal dating conversations, like what music you're into or where you've traveled or like if you have mutual friends and things and you get cut off and they'll, because it's not interesting conversation. <laughs> you're wasting our, yeah. you're wasting our time. Move on. Now, yeah. It's they'll be dark. like, come on guys, um, talk about something else. Don't, don't talk about that. Travel. They hated us talking about travel, which is interesting because I've lived and worked and traveled so many countries and I don't even think that's apparent on the show and it's quite a big part of me. Yeah, um, yeah. But yeah, so amount of time, yeah, you're kept apart. Um, that's one thing that people don't realize. And the other thing that people don't realize watching is that they get to see so much more than I do. So not only do I not get to spend time with these boys, men, women, <laughs> um, I also don't get to see... What they what they say in their director camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was a real big shift for me because um, I don't get to watch the show before it goes on TV. Mm. So I'm watching with the nation. And oh, really? Like, you, you don't you no don't get previews. a? Because I know sometimes they cut the episode quite late. No, you don't pre- get it a day nothing, before or the, nothing. So I was watching it before. I was thinking I was getting them like the weekend yes, before. Yes, yes, right. because you. Oh, I should have sent you the link. I know you people were getting it before me. You radio people, the media, because everyone had their comments ready to go, and I was like, "Someone send me the link." Um, so I wasn't. Yeah, I wasn't getting to see it until it was being broadcast. Um, and yeah, that was there was a real big shift in how I felt. Um, about people because of what I now got to see, yeah. which I never got to see before. That must be so frustrating, especially when there's there's people like me on the radio going, why didn't you meet Paul? Yes. Paul's a great guy. Yes. And it's like, because we've got the foresight of yes, you have seeing the things. And, it, yeah. yeah. Mm, and so but you're sort of going in blind. 100%. Way blinder than people realise I am. Um, yeah, and that was maybe something that I didn't anticipate was that. Was that. But, you know, it's... Um, I don't I don't think you can only work with what you've got at the time. Hindsight is a beautiful thing. So I, I can't I, w- I can't say that I had changed anything because I didn't know any differently, yeah, right? Yeah. So um, You've got to go with your heart, which you did. Yeah, well I think I guess. Yeah, you get to it's I mean also like how much of it is even your heart when you've it's been five weeks. Yeah. You know, like the season before was eight weeks. So they got at least a few more weeks. They went on several dates with each other. Like I I had Someone in my lineup, so that final lineup before we went to home visits, I had Jack, and Jack and I hadn't even had a chance to hit, go on a date. Ha, that doesn't make sense. Mm. Why would he be in the lineup who to was, possibly take Jack? home? Is he, is he the, the, um, the younger guy that ended up self-eliminating? Mm. Is that him? Right. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, what happened there? Did he get cold feet? So, uh, we hadn't spent any time together. Right. Um, but I knew that I always liked him. I always remember every time I spoke to him, I was like, I like that guy. Um, and then... We had the kiss in the lake, which was outrageous. By the way, um, how, you, you had more than one kiss in the lake. I, I did, you, yeah. I was just <laughs> you, you were loving lakes. In the lake. yeah. It must have been so cold as well. It was a southern yeah. central Otago It lake. wasn't warm, um, <laughs> but I actually watched that episode with my mum. And like, <laughs> I remember after we filmed that day, um, someone told me that one of the producers from the network was like, oh my God, that was so steamy. And I was like, really? I just... Smooch in the lake. Anyway, oh, no, it, then, it, it, did, it did look good. Then though, I saw all on I'm TV is that water and I was like, freezing. "Yeah." Well, I just I had to. I was watching the episode with my mum, and I was like, "Oh my god! Oh my god!" Anyway, we had this time in the lake. Had a great time, and it just kind of was like, it just felt like quite um, a lot. Like it was all happening, and I hadn't had a chance to like, yeah, speak with him, and then. Yeah, it was just a lot, and it was all quite real. And then, um, yeah, we just like as always, we never, no one gets a chance to speak or process or figure it out. And I had to choose four boys to go to home visits, and I hadn't even been on a date with that guy, so it just didn't seem to make sense. No matter how I was feeling, it would have been out of place. Yeah. And he was a little protective of his family. I don't think his family were keen on home right, visits, right? Right. Um, unless he was really sure about the girl. Mm. So whatever we were feeling, we were feeling, but. We couldn't be sure about anything because it was all just happening. Yeah, I suppose it's like heightened emotions for everyone. Um, yes, and you're also further down the process. So, like, sure. I had kept it together that entire process and not cried until that day. And you're at the end. You're you're near the end. You're mm-hmm. exhausted. 
Um, yeah, <laughs> it's. I think this is how reality TV gets you. They wear you down. You start off fresh faced, <laughs> and you're like happy as, and you're like, I can take on the world. And then by like the end of like you're in the final week, and you're like exhausted. You're so sick of talking about your feelings. You don't even know what you feel. And I, then I think something that I struggled with towards the end, because you know how at the start I said it was kind of. Um, it helped me keep it light and um, stuff because I didn't super feel crazy feelings towards anyone yeah, instantly. Yeah. But obviously towards the end, you are starting to get to know people a bit and you are starting to think about them romantically because that's the whole point of this thing. And then you're meeting families and that I think I, I, I took video diaries of myself throughout the whole thing and there's, there's a video diary of me in the hotel crying because I think I just feel – so overwhelmed by um, people's feelings and expectations, especially once you brought the families in. Because they're real families. Yeah, and I yeah. loved, like, they were all so welcoming and lovely. And like I said, I'm a real people person and I do make connections and I really value them. And to meet all those families and have such a lovely time, that was really overwhelming for me to then have to, like, cut Break some, some hearts. Yeah. yeah. Oh, this is a funny story. I was in the airport... Um, I think I was flying up north. Um, for, so I'd done my first two home visits or something. Anyway, um, I'd done Paul's home visit and then I'd said goodbye to Paul. So I'd met all his family, had like the best time, but Paul wasn't the one. And I'd said goodbye to Paul. And the next day I was in the airport and I saw his sister and I was like, Oh no! <laughs> and I thought just, she'd just, seen just me. Just by chance, yeah, just by chance. Oh, and I thought she'd seen me, and I was like, "I'm gonna say hi," because like that's just the person I am. Like, oh, good for you. If it was human. me, I'd pretend to be reading a text yeah. on my phone. And so I went over, and I stood by the table, and I said hello. And she looked up at me. And she goes, "Oh my god!" <laughs> and I was like, "How are you?" And she was like, "I'm good. How are you?" And I was like, "I'm all right," because I'd said goodbye to Paul the night before. So um, yeah. Anyway, we we kind of when, had when, a when, you, chat. when you say you say goodbye the night oh in As the a, rose ceremony yes, from the show okay yes, right, right he was gotcha. on the show and um mm. and just through our conversation she was like yeah Paul texted me uh, told me you didn't pick him and I was like yeah and she was like yeah I texted back and was like fuck that girl <laughs> and I was like amazing <laughs> well thank you for telling me that but it's quite funny to say that stuff to to, like, to my face and yeah, I'm yeah. also just like not worried because I'm like yeah hard like you're his family of course you're gonna to be protective of that and also in my position I had to make decisions and I did what I thought was best at the time and you know like it's all good yeah um you were probably overseas when this happened but a previous series there was this guy called uh Jordan who was the bachelor yeah and he ended up with two he ended up with uh, these two girls called Naz and Fleur okay and then uh that was a while ago eh? yeah like a few you know, a few seasons ago so yeah. you, you were probably overseas but um I think the the ratings on reality shows like that were a lot higher than what they are now and yeah it, by the time the final episode went to air they like broke up with her on that day and it ended up being like a Big nationwide bombshell thing, and yeah. the social media backlash for for this guy was just severe. Is like he the I, one that just like flew to Australia? Did he just escape? He probably had to for his own safety. Yeah, <laughs> but um, it was like it was really intense. And it's now, now hearing your insights, it's like he must have been thinking, I didn't even know these girls. It's really intense, and like ugh, it's so intense, like for so many reasons. There's the intensity of the people that you're dealing with on the show, right? Like the actual men who are there, because. Um, yeah, they're invested and lovely and genuine, most of them. And then there's, like, the intensity of um, the producers and them needing all this shit from yeah, you. Like, they yeah. need you, right? Like, the show centers around you. That's intense. And then once the show goes to air, there is the intensity of, like, nat national opinion, like, people's opinion who don't know you. But, yeah, it, it also is everyone else who is kind of brought into it, like all of our friends and all of our family. And then it just kind of ripples out. Like then you'll meet this person once and that person once. And so all those people have opinions. And it is so much. And I remember feeling pressure in certain ways and thinking, holy shit, like if I'm feeling this pressure and if I'm feeling this way about what I'm thinking about right now, I can't imagine what it would be like to actually be like um, Lucina last season because she oh, yeah, she the didn't yeah, she didn't yeah. pick someone and then I don't know what was going on but she had to do the reunion and I think if I had to do the reunion after I'd already broken up with Hamish I, I that would have been so nerve wracking um, so I totally appreciate how overwhelming it can mm. all be and everyone's opinions and no one actually knows right what goes on um, unless you tell them and. 
no one can really appreciate it for what it is. So yeah. you just have to know yourself and like stay true and honestly don't don't sweat the small stuff. Mm. But, would you have you been burnt by a reality TV or would you do it again? What, what if um what if your friend Sarah said oh, I've been tapped <laughs> on the shoulder to be the next? What would you say to her? I'd say yes, do it. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah, I would. I definitely haven't been burnt by it. Um. I I had a really great time. Um, overall, like epic experience, insane thing to do. And I've made some amazing friends out of it. Um, I recommend it to anybody who, uh, is really sure of themselves and has a thick skin, um, and just likes to go and do some cool shit. Basically. Um, I do think I had a good run, but I, I don't think that's by chance. I think that it's due to my nature and it's due to how I acted and how I hold myself that of, of course I had a good run. And of course, um, you know, I wasn't produced badly. Um, so it, it's not great for everyone. And you also can't control what happens to you on the show. So fortunately for me, I didn't have, on the show, didn't have many dramas with people acting out and me having to de- deal with that on national TV and yeah. things like that. Um, so, yeah, in that sense, I had a good run in terms of no one else did anything mm. super out the gate um, that I had to deal with. But... Um, I would recommend it. It's so fun. Mm. It's so fun. Oh, see, one thing um, yeah, about that show, you know how you, you always talk about your feelings. Yes. You, oh, my God. Are you, what are you like? Are you quite a good communicator in relationships normally? Like, yeah. Are you, yeah, are you? Yeah. I really – well, I think I am. Um, I really value communication. Mm. I feel like most negative interactions or arguments or um, disagreements usually centre around a miscommunication. It's usually like, oh, I thought you meant this mm. or you – and then – and. So if, if I can just speak about it, get it out, and like not even straight away, if we can just simmer on it and then talk about it, I just think um, communication is key. Mm. So yes, I do think I'm quite a communicator, um, and I think that was probably really helpful for the type of show that I did. Because you know, I wouldn't do yeah, I wouldn't do reality TV again for love, but I would. <laughs> no married at first sight. Then. No <laughs> way could not pay me. You could not pay me a oh, million dollars to do that. I'll tell you what, nobody would you comes do off. It? No, no, no one comes off that show looking good. It's no. almost like they see. I suppose you, you go on the Bachelorette or the Bachelor. It's like random luck. It's like they, 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 they. You get the Bachelor or Bachelorette and get a bunch of guys or girls. Yeah. and hopefully there's someone there that you you click with. But yes. if not, no big deal. Yes. Married at first sight. It's almost like they they go right. This is what Lexi's into. Mm-hmm. Let's get someone completely I know. opposite. Oh, 100 percent. I think it's so unfair. <laughs> yeah. They're not actually truly matchmaking. That's I a think a up. couple of them get it right, and then the other ones, it's pure entertainment. Yeah, yeah. And this yeah. is what they do. So what I learned through my show is when they cast, they have people called contenders and people called characters. So some people are cast as characters. So they're not relative or like they're not related to me or what I like, or possibly in these other shows. They don't make sense at all, but they're for TV and entertainment value. I mean, maybe it's like this in radio. Yeah. And then they have contenders, which are actually relevant, um, could have a chance, blah, blah, blah. And so married at first sight, I'm mm. like, you're just messing with people's lives. Because mm. they do some really good matches, and others they definitely do, mm. just so that people make drama and good TV, I guess. Yeah. Good TV is questionable. Yeah, that's, TV. That's, yeah, I know. I, I, think it's, I think it's good. It's the, it's the shittiest <laughs> Yeah, form of TV. Yeah, oh my but god! I, love I know it. I'm it's, it's with like it. a it's truly is an experiment, like human nature experiment. Yeah, but it's just that these poor people have to sacrifice like a chunk of their life, and you know, in the UK, it is ruthless over there with like gossip and like gossip mags and oh the tabloids. Yeah. Oh my it's god! Mad. It's like you know, and they have issues with suicide and things. So mm. my mum was a little concerned with about um, just the effect that this whole thing can have, just being my mum and everything, um, but. I I wasn't. Were you? No, Sarah wasn't worried either. Um, I just went out there and enjoyed myself. Well, I think I think that's your attitude. It's just that yeah. sort of go with the flow attitude. Yeah. Yeah. So w- what's next for you? You told me that after we did the podcast today, you're starting a new course. What are you What are you doing? Well, I've actually already started. So um, I went back to school last year. I'm just doing a graduate diploma in digital design. So I've worked as a brand and marketing manager um, since I kind of started my career, and yeah, I just need to level up and I want to and I have some big plans for myself and yeah just kind of um getting those abilities under my belt Mm. and yeah that's kind of what I'm focusing on at the moment says I have a few projects and um yeah just gonna keep enjoying 
my life. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you will. Um, and, and Instagram is not real life, but uh, yeah, I, I even wondered if you had a job because it's like it's, <laughs> I do work. I know uh, it's, it looks you're like you're very leisure based. I she's know. at the beach. She's on a boat. She's up a mountain. <laughs> <laughs> she's in a lake. I like to enjoy my life, Dom. Life is for living. Um, yeah, I do work, so I'm I'm studying full time, and I also work um, contract on the side. Right. Yeah, which is good. So I'm still working. Um, but yeah, we do have a lot of fun. Yeah. I think I think a lot of people think we don't have jobs, but we both do, and we both, um, yeah, we work hard. Um, but like I said, you've got to enjoy every day, not Absolutely. just the big stuff. And you got to get that balance right as well. Oh, everything is balanced. The older I get, the more I'm like balance. Mm. And have you have you found um, the last couple of years with COVID? Like uh, you mentioned before, that you've done a heap of travel. You've lived in mm. Canada. You've yep. lived in the UK. Yep. Um, have you found it hard being rooted on the ground here in New Zealand? Yeah, we've <laughs> it's been a big transition phase for us, I think. Sarah also lived overseas, so the two of us are having these, like, going, riding the wave at the same time. Mm. Like, we, we take turns to have meltdowns. Um, <laughs> it's definitely been an interesting um, transition to come home for a number of reasons. Sometimes, I don't know, like, I guess we feel like we didn't come home by choice, mm. um, but that's not to say I wouldn't have come home soon anyway had, had COVID not happened. Um, so, because I lived overseas for seven years and... Did you, in, yeah, whereabouts? London, Canada? Yeah, so I was in Sydney, then I went to Japan, then I went to uh, France, then I went to England, then I went to Canada. And, all right. Yeah, and then just travelled kind of to countries among what, all the What were you doing? Places. Just like normal office um, jobs? Or? Yeah, so Sydney, I was fresh out of uni and I was like an intern at a um, fashion PR company. And then in Japan, I taught English. Um, in France, I was a live-in nanny. And in the UK, I continued my like <clears throat> real job you could say, and I went back into brand and marketing for a few years. And then in Canada, I was a ski bum and just worked ski bum jobs. Um, so, yeah, those are my array of random things that mm. I've done in my life. Um, God, it makes life so interesting though, doesn't it? It so does. Yeah, yeah. And I think because I've been so many different places and met so many different people, I it's really great for people, like just people, because you can relate to a lot of people yeah. in a lot of ways. Um, but... I wouldn't change it for anything because you you come home and there's like two sets of people. There's people who have never left and they're married and they have kids and that sounds wonderful and I am definitely like, you know, going in that direction now. Um, but then there's like the other set which is more like us and we've like, we've come home um, and we've lived a different kind of life and um and so, yeah, the people who are at home who haven't left are like, oh, my God, like, you guys have done so much. That's so exciting. Um, and then it's just you want what everyone else has, right? Cause now, cause, yeah, I you suppose know. it's, it's pro, pros and cons. It's like um, cause I was busy ca- you're carving out my radio career, doing yeah. breakfast hours, which does mean making a lot of sacrifices. Yeah. My sister, on the other hand, she went overseas, met her husband, they yeah. here, but they were late on the property ladder. Yes. And she's like, well, you've, you've got a house and you've got this and yes. we can't afford it. So, it's, it's really sacrifices. pros and cons. It yeah. is, it is. And it's, um, I wouldn't change what I've done for the world. But, you know, it does mean we've come home to this really screwed property market. Um, <clears throat> we're dealing with covid um, yeah, it's a different time and yeah, we don't have, you know, um, partners and kids and, and all those things, but that'll come. Um, and I, I've, my life so far has been amazing. Mm. I feel do you, so have you, do you feel like you've got the, um, the travel bug out of your system? Like, are you, are you, are you I don't know if I'll ever get that out of my system. Mm. I still have extreme wanderlust moments and days oh my god and I get reminded of things I'm really big on smells so things will trigger my memories big time certain smells will take me right back like certain cleaning products remind me of certain places <laughs> it's so random oh, but it like, smells like a hospital you no know, it's just like like a certain soap will remind me right. of a soap that was like at my school in Japan or like as someone is wearing a perfume and it reminds me of like someone I lived with in London or like it's crazy and I go right back and it makes my whole body's like oh my god I, I want to go I miss kind of the wanderlust and the feeling and the exploring. Um, but it's just kind of retraining the mind, I guess, and um, doing a bit of that in New Zealand. So um, kind of making it work with what we've got. And, and and the pro as well is now that we're home, we get to spend time with family, which we just – it makes us so, so happy. I get to see my mum – Way more regularly. We live an hour from our grandparents. I live, yeah, very close to my dad. Two of my brothers live in the same town. You know, my other brothers came and spent the whole New Year's here with me. So to be home again and closer to those people that I truly love is the best part of coming home. Yeah. And worth it. Are your um are your parents still together? No, no. no. My mum raised me. Um so yeah, we um 
uh, I was born in Palmy and she was at uni there. So, yeah, we lived in uni flats. There's some crack up photos of uni Palmy parties. As well. I Are you from Palmy? Well, I don't know if I'd say I'm from Palmy, but I guess technically I am. Um, I was born there, lived there till I was 10. Yeah. Where about are you from? So like um, Riverdale area, Riverdale Owl okay. Pony. Um, oh yes, I um, we lived on Ferguson Street, and I went to um, West End. West End, oh, a- isn't that across from Owl Pony College? Uh, oh, oh, Owl Tapu, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, Our crap, we used to call it. Oh, we went to uh, High. shade throwing. <laughs> it was a sick burn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, and then when did you leave Palmy? Um, I left uh, about 20 years ago. Yeah, I okay. worked at a station there called 2XS. Oh, I remember 2XS. Yeah, yeah. Cracker. Oh, small world. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. It's, an, it's a nice place. I think like everywhere, everywhere is becoming up and coming. Mm. You know, like everything is starting to shift and evolve and get cool little cafes and, you know, with this housing market thing, I feel like so many people are starting to shun like true city living and everyone's mm. going outwards and like a nicer lifestyle and better balance and stuff like that. Yeah. Have you, have you given up on home ownership or do you one day hope to? No, we haven't given up. Yeah. We'll probably buy it together, Sarah and I. Um, that's kind of the way it seems to be at the moment. Definitely haven't given up. Okay. Absolutely. Well, you've got a sweet setup at the moment. It's uh, you, your best friend, Sarah, two yes. other girls in the flat. I know. This house is great. We're only two blocks off the beach. And, like, yeah, there's so much sand in our house and there's so much sand in my car. And I just love it because it means we live at the beach. And I'm like, <laughs> yes, this is what I always wanted. Right, you and me are very opposite. Like, I, <laughs> I, I like the idea of the beach, but then I get back in my car afterwards and there's sand there for oh, days. Oh, annoys you. Yeah, the expectation versus reality. Yes. But you are. I do. I love cities, though. I love, love, love cities. Like, I, I actually really like Auckland, and I know people hate Auckland, but I lived in Auckland for a couple of years and loved it. Absolutely loved it. And every time I go back, I love it. I don't know. I just, there's more happening there than anywhere else in New Zealand um, in a lot of ways. And, and even just population, because I'm such a people person, I like being somewhere that's humming. Yeah. Um, but I also like being at the beach. I'm just a massive mo- oxymoron in a lot of ways. I like all the things all the time. So I just, yeah. I, I always enjoy a visit in Auckland. Jeez, we've had very little uh, running chat in um, oh, yes. today, okay. today's, today's podcast, but <laughs> it's, been, it's been great. It's been wonderful getting an insight into into you as a person and into the um, the Bachelorette as well. Mm-hmm. So how much are you running, now that you've got the half marathon done, did yeah. the, the running, so that was August last year, did yeah. the running drop off completely? Or drastically. Still, yeah. um, well, no, I would say that the distances dropped off drastically, um, but I still run regularly. Um I said after the marathon, I was like, right, half marathon, sorry. After my half, I was like, right, never doing that again. But I just feel like I probably will. Mm. Um, I'm a sucker for a challenge. Like if someone's like this, Lexi, I'll be like, no. And then the next day I'll be like, fine. Um, but Sarah ran a quarter when I ran my half. So I feel like she's going to want to run a half soon. So maybe I'll run a half with her. Yeah. We can train together and stuff. Well, now that you've done one, like you know that, you can, you know that your body I know can that handle I can. it. Oh, it's pretty yeah. incredible. Like if you just slowly build, it was really interesting for me as well. If I just slowly build – on my K's and, like, speed and stuff, you can do it. Yeah. I think people think it's something you can either do or you can't do. And I think a lot of people go from nothing to trying to run 10K. And then they're like, oh, my God, that was the hardest thing in the world. I'm not doing it. But it's yeah. like, well, you just tried to run 10K after doing nothing. So if you just slowly build, it's so achievable. Yeah, ab- absolutely. And just, um, <laughs> oh, your friend Sarah's just bought out a medal. This is my half marathon proof. Oh, the City to Surf medal. Oh, okay, so... <laughs> Right, oh, so because you were signed up, even yeah. though the event didn't go ahead, I if still you ran prove that, that weekend. You, yeah. Oh, and that's then, cool. Yeah. That's cool. Got the medal. Everyone's a sucker for a medal. Like, I know. I mean, that, it's so junk. enjoyable. Like, it's like you, we're all you, kids again. Yeah, I'm yeah, like, yeah. Give yeah. me my medal. <laughs> <laughs> how, how long did you wear it around for after you got it? <laughs> <laughs> Only about three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> well, you earn these things. Okay, well, um, we'll end with some um, quick fire running questions. Oh, God. Um, okay. What, what, do you, what do you listen to when you run? Oh, usually podcasts. Um, uh, and I just go between like, um, serious kind of like businessy ones that like give me inspo or like real shit chat, funny girl ones. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm the same. A lot of, a lot of people, uh, they find it really weird that I listen to spoken word, uh, when I oh, run rather no. than music, but, um, yeah. I like it. It feels like you're getting shit done. Yeah. Same. I feel like I'm using that time to actually like do something. Um, yeah. But sometimes 
I'm not into a podcast and I will play just like real unsy music. Do you find, oh no, you don't listen to music. When I, no, sometimes I do. My like, speed, yeah. my speed is sometimes dependent on like what music I'm listening yeah, to. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, it does that. Yeah, the, um, the beat or the yeah. cadence of a music. Yeah, yeah. it definitely works. Um, what's your favorite place to run? Did you have a favorite route? I love running. Um, I do a lot of pavement running just because I live yeah. like this, but, um, I love getting into the bush and running like real simple trails, like just not even trails, but, um, just like, it's nice to be out and off the road. Mm, mm. Um, there's a really nice track in Coldo down behind the golf course, like so beautiful by this river. And I just was like, as I, I literally like skip along, like looking around like, <laughs> Oh my God, this is so beautiful. And it's, you know, we live here. It is. We're very lucky. What about the mount? You're like you're not far from the mount. Do you run around there, or do you yep. sort of? Yeah. I like running around the mount. I have not ran up the mount. I don't know if that's something I want to do. Although Cody did suggest it, and I did say I would, so I'll probably run up the mount soon. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Um. Do you have a favorite shoe? <clears throat> what, what did you run on? Um. I started with Nikes, and then I went to mo- um, what? Then I moved to New Balance. Um. But I need another new pair. Do you have a recommendation for me? Actually, well, I love. I love. How old are you? 32. So, yeah, I'm in a pair called Hokas, which um, are okay. very, very ugly. They're never going to win a beauty contest, <laughs> but they offer so much support. Okay. And if you get, if you get like a big run overseas, like the, I don't know, like the New York Marathon or something. Yeah. You, you know when you wear a pair of shoes, how you notice other people wearing the same? Yes. Shoes? Yeah, you notice a lot of like middle-aged runners wearing hokas. <laughs> so maybe you're not ready for the hokas okay. just yet. Okay, maybe I'll sit tight on the hokas. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if you have any other recommends, let me know because I need a new running shoe because mine are absolutely screwed. Yeah. It is amazing how fast shoes expire when you run that much. Yeah, yeah. Holy, absolutely. you must go through shoes every how cu- often? Every couple of months, I guess. Oh my god. Um, how far do you run every month, do you reckon? Um. Probably between 300 and 400k a month. Oh my god. Uh, I just, You're a full running oh. psycho. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, do you prefer to run alone or with a crew? I enjoy both, but I probably, for longer distances, with people. Yeah. It just keeps my spirits high. I think. Um, it passes the time. Yes, it passes the time. Yeah. When I run with Cody, we just chat shit the whole time. Yeah. Um, and when Sarah and I run together, we talk the whole time as well. Um, so I'd probably, if I had to choose, I'd say with. Mm. Do you prefer hot or cold? Cold. Yes. Yeah, I can't run in the heat. Like, I live in the mountain now, and mm. Sarah's like, do you want to go for a run? And I'm like, no. Only if it's before 8 o'clock or after yeah. 8 p.m. I, I can't hack the heat. I tried to do a running club at 6 p.m. on a Monday. Never went back. Mm. So hot. Although, in saying that, let's be honest. Like you, you, you know, you live in Bay of Plenty. So yes. June, July last year, when you were doing your big training runs for the half marathon, yes. it's not cold, cold, is it? No, it wasn't. Cold. <laughs> You're not wearing a beanie and gloves. No, no, no. <laughs> but although I did surprise myself when I lived in London, I would still go out like December, January, Feb. Right. I ran all through that, and I just had like what I needed to stay warm. Oh, I love it over there at that time of year. Mm, so it's good. Crisp. It, you just get used to it, and then you start to kind of like it. And um, do you have a go-to meal the night before a big run? You said your friend Cody was helping you out with your yeah. nutrition. What did he advise? He was kind of more guiding me on what to eat the morning of right. and, and during. So, like, you know, the sweets for, like, is it the glucose that gives oh, us gels. instant? Well, right. I was just buying, like, jet planes. Oh, yeah, they're good. Um, yeah, are they good? What do you eat? Um, yeah, I'll take jet planes with me. Well, you have these gels, but the gels are disgusting. Yeah, they're awful. Are they? I've never found a gel that's good. That you like. Yeah, yeah Cody terrible. had this thing as well in a bottle, and it was like, I think it was like electrolytes and salts and stuff. And I actually really liked it. It tastes like sherbet. Mm. He was always like, sorry, it's strong. And I was like, I don't like it. <laughs> you must have heard the term runner's high. Have you heard the term runner's high before? As in the high that you get from completing a run or doing a run? Yeah, it can be either or. Like an yeah. endorphin. Is it real or a myth, the runner's high? I think it's real. Yeah. Um, but I, as you know, I'm kind of that type of person anyway. Like I love to love shit. So um, like when I did the half marathon, I was so... Stoked. I was so, so stoked. We did it really early. In the, oh, my God. We did it so early. We started at 4.30 in the morning because Cody had work at, like, some time. And I didn't want to run it this other day. It was, like, the only opportunity. So we were like, oh, well, off we go 4.30 in the morning. Um, and then we cracked a beer afterwards. And I was just, like, loving what, life. At, like, 7, 8 a.m.? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Definitely. I had to celebrate. I was... So, so. I reckon it's real for the runners high. Yeah. And also there'll be so much going on in our bodies as well. Mm. And, you know, you really 
you really prepare for it in a lot of ways, mentally and physically. And so, like, it's a huge achievement, I think. Yeah, 100%. Well, that's how I felt anyway. I, I agree. Then there's sometimes I, I find I get a runner's high, like, during a run yeah. where you feel amazing. And then other times the mm. whole run will be awful from start to finish. But then you get back home, yeah. take your shoes off. Yeah. Crack open that beer yeah. or get in the shower, whatever, and you yeah. think, I'm so glad I did I that. Did I did that. Feel amazing. Yes, yes. And I think it's a, um, I think something I do enjoy about running is that I can just go do it. I don't need anyone to help me. I yeah. don't need equipment except shoes, really. Um, I can just go. I have ability, like I have a full working body, like so fortunate. And it's just, you can just get out there and go no matter how you feel. You're right. Because sometimes, oh my God, some runs, I just run the whole thing being like, I hate this. But then, <laughs> I think it's normal. Yeah, it's it's just good yeah. days and bad days, right? So, Absolutely. Um, I believe in the runner's high. I've experienced the runner's high. And do you think um, that running will always be some sort of part of your life? I think so. I yeah. think I'll always run. It um, makes me f- feel like it's this thing that, that I have where I can go and find some sanity. Yeah. You know? I've definitely – I remember in London I was – fuming about something that had just happened and it wasn't I didn't get home until nine o'clock at night. I was furious and I just put I just got dressed. I didn't even think use my brain. I just got dressed and I ran like and I ran way further than I normally went and I was charging. And I just that was the first time I ever felt like I'd used running to my advantage as an outlet. To vent. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. And I just like ran it off and then I just went to bed and I was so tired that it was good. It helped me get to sleep. So um, I think I'll always run. It kind of holds that place where it's something I know that I can do and is there when I need it. And it's just great for fitness as well. Yeah. Hey, well, thanks for your time today and thanks for sharing your story. Thank you for coming how, how, and thanks for inviting me. I, I don't even think I've like banged the table once. <laughs> <laughs> I've, um, I'll tell you what, it's the, it's the, it's the weirdest thing because I've been, um, I've been so nervous about this. Yeah. Not, not you as a person. I'm Just, very, very relaxed around you. Just about the whole thing. Yeah. You know, it's, um, but I think it's good to be scared. Yes. And I feel like um I feel like that's like a Lexi Lexi Brown sort of thing. Like, yes, it is. Do something that fries yes, you. Yeah, but do it anyway. Yeah. Um well congratulations and I'm proud of you for like getting out there and doing it. Yeah. After the bachelorette you you did the radio circuit thing. So you know yes. you know how radio works. Like yes. you go in for an interview. Yeah. If it's a pre recorded one, it might be ten minutes, then yeah. it'll be cut down to five minutes. And everything's kind of done almost negatively. You think, okay, if someone's not watching the bachelorette, yeah. will they still find this interesting? So you edit it. As short as possible for that. So it's nice to sit here and um, not format. have to watch the clock. Yeah. And just uh, sit and listen to you speak and get Good. your stories. I've oh, really I'm enjoyed it. I'm glad you've enjoyed it because this must be a really big shift for you after doing radio for so long, right? Yeah. And this is the first kind of um, part of your of a new direction Next for adventure, you. Next yeah. How often um, will your podcast be available? Once a week. Once a week. Once a week initially, okay. yeah. Nice. And then we'll just, just yeah, see how it goes. See how it goes. But I feel like I'm learning a new skill as well. It's like, yeah. even though I've been broadcasting for so many years, yeah. it's, you know, it's a very different sort of style of broadcasting. Yeah, definitely. And I, I think it's really interesting as we become adults, I think adults often stop learning. Yeah. And if there's something that they don't know how to do, they might give it one crack. And if it's hard, they will just think they can't do it mm. or don't have the skills. Yeah. Um. So I think it's epic when adults go out and do new things and stick to it and actually kind of like get that skill under their belt. Yeah. So well done. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I think as you get older, turn more established in what you're doing. You, yeah. you, you don't want to look like a fool or you don't want to fail at something. You yeah, know? yes. That's what um, people worry about. Yeah. And you have to try your hardest to... I don't give a shit what other people think. You gotta literally like focus on yourself. Because when you realise that other people don't actually think that much about you, yes, <laughs> they're just thinking about themselves. Yes. Then once you do that, it's quite liberating. And so liberating, yeah. especially like, and I'm sure you have experienced this in radio, um, and I experienced this because of the show. Is yeah, you. It's this big cycle of like um, people give you all of their opinions and they don't even know you, and so you get suddenly hyper aware that all these people have these opinions. So you start to think everyone does. But actually, not that many people actually do. And so then you kind of come right again and just think, not actually that many people think about it. And even the ones that do and have really strong opinions, it doesn't matter. Like, mm. who gives a shit? They're not, they're 100%. not you know? Yeah. And it's, I think it, you're right, liberating is the word. It's like a hard process to go through, caring, and then you get out the other side and you're, like, better off because you've just learned so much more about, like, what matters, like, and who matters, I guess, I think. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, Absolutely. <clears throat> well, lovely to sit down with you today. Yes, you too. Thank and, you for having me. And what's your um? Well, t- you had me. I'm sitting at your table. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> with builders outside. I know. Sorry about sorry the builders, about the, guys. The nail gun. They're very close. Um. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um. Best of luck for 2022. Thank you. You too. Uh, your, your birthday in August. Have you got any, any plans lined up yet for Come your on, birthday Dom, month? You know me. There's a lot in the pipeline. <laughs> <laughs> you follow Lexi Brown on Instagram for yep. her birthday month in August. Yes. What's your handle again? Miss Lexi Brown. Thanks so much for your time. Thank you, Dom. Wow, you're still here. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I can't believe it. You are a true endurance person. Thank you very much. You made it right to the very end. I uh, hope you enjoyed that. That was Miss Lexi Brown from The Bachelorette on TVNZ2 last year. Great human, good friend of mine. Thank you so much for being here. Really appreciate it. And uh, hopefully we'll see you next time for Runners Only with Dom Harvey.